Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I appreciate you being here today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolyn Zeiser. I'm a channel, a distance energy healer, and a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channeled messages either from the light keepers or conversations that I have regarding various topics, or sometimes when I work with other people and offer you videos, all for your awakening and ascension and life journey. So I hope you enjoy this today. We are going to continue today on the topic I started. It's actually the second installment of the one I started. Actually, now I think it's a couple months ago of what I wish I'd known before I started my awakening journey. Because as we know, there is no playbook for this. We're the first ones doing this, collectively speaking. This has not been done before. So for those of you who are new or those of you who are more experienced at this journey, every phase around the corner is different and unique. Again, there's no playbook for this. So what I would say to you is, even though maybe you've been traveling this journey a while, you might get some nuggets of things out of this um, that um, will assist you on your journey forward. Those of you who are new to this or newer will get a lot out of this, I believe. So this is based on my experience um, in addition to channeled information I've received and also understanding the patterns of what this journey is about. Given the work I do, since I have a business, I work with a lot of you who are awakening, going through the Ascension journey and assisting you forward. So I also see patterns. but. I have experienced most all of this, I will say, and I have found that if I was to write a playbook um, for this or a guidebook, or we would have um, not just a course in school, but uh, that would follow you through your life journey, these are the things I would add that I wish I would have known about the awakening journey before it all started, okay? And I'm not so sure you can really prepare for it at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can, but um, it would have been nice to know because like I said, we're just kind of plodding through this. We really are. We're learning from each other. We're learning from our own information we're receiving. We're learning from the patterns of others. And um, of course, then also, you know, folks like me with channeled information about the journey that assists us forward as well. So again, as I always say, take what resonates, toss the rest aside, use what you want from what I give you, and hopefully you will find some nuggets to take with you in your journey. Forward. So with that said, I will mention that down below in the description box, if you want more free content, I also channel poetry from the Light Keepers, who are a group of angelic beings who showed up in Sedona, Arizona back in 2017 for me. And I just started prolifically channeling poetry. And it's all very spiritual based. It's supportive for your journey forward. And what I offer is a weekly email where I send it out to you on a Friday and you will get a supportive message for the week moving forward. So you can check out the link below and you can join me there again for more free content. You're also gonna get a video on flow and how to create that um, for your health and wellness. And I think there are a couple of videos that also tell you a little bit about my journey so you can listen to those as well. But you'll get a weekly email from me and that's what I use my email list for. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything, I guess I will make a couple comments. There's some edits I wanna to make to the last video real quickly. Um, and also talk briefly about what's coming up. We're not going to get into that too much. And then I'm going to launch into at least, um, I have nine things, but we're not going to cover them all. It'll come back in another installment. Um, so first of all, just real quickly about the video last week that I offered on the uh, guided, I'll just call it a guided meditation, even though I didn't, didn't record it that way. You guys can figure that out yourself and how you want to use it. Because remember, it's also about what you create for that, but it's the premise that's most important. What I would say to you though, is somehow when I spoke to you, I mentioned not like going straight to the throat chakra, do all your chakras. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, listen to that video and you'll know if you haven't listened to it before, but go through all of your chakras. Okay. That'll be helpful. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. Uh, I think that's it. So just know that that's what it's designed for. And then you fill yourself up with light in the end. Okay. All right, so um, as far as where we're at now collectively, we are really, um, I think you might remember the last few months of 2023, they were talking about wrapping things up before the end of the year and they were talking about putting a bow on it. They kept saying, putting a bow on it. Well, guess what? And remember, things that come in for a month aren't just that month. They, they kind of start or they'll be around that time frame. okay? So this is now continued into the new year where we're wrapping things up, we're putting bows on it, things are happening for us, to us, uh, uh, whether it's in the material world or energetically speaking, because we have a big event 
coming in April. We have a North American, I believe, eclipse. So I kept seeing this energy, and you guys will know this, those of you who listen to this, I keep saying, oh, in springtime, April, there's something big. Well, it's the eclipse. And somebody said to me, you know, there's an eclipse on April 8th. And it's running, actually, it's just a few hours away from me where the height of it will be. Um, but, because I'm in Iowa in the United States, and it's kind of doing a diagonal thing at least from what I understand. But needless to say, that's what we're looking at. It's going to be highly energetic. How that plays out, what that looks like, is anybody's guess, right? Because remember, energy that is provided to us can also unfold over time in how it manifests, okay? But I do get very much this massive upliftment for humankind. Um, and again, we'll talk more about that as the time comes. So otherwise, I'll start getting into a whole energy update again. So let's Go ahead now, and I'm going to talk about at least a few of the items on my list that I wish I would have known before I went through my awakening journey. Now, granted, we wouldn't have had any context for it, but just roll with me on this. <laughs> so first of all, I would have loved to have known that we're all, we're all energy. We're, we're, we're energy in a material body. Everything's energy, okay? Because when you understand that at the simplest form that everything is energy honestly at least for me it has made everything else so much more understandable everything okay and it kind of then gets you into quantum physics and all of that but it doesn't have to get complex but if you just know that everything is energy you are energy and how energy works and vibration and frequency and all of that and that we are just energy, just, we're energy in material form, in a human body. So we can have these experiences and create out of that, okay? So there's a lot surrounding the idea of knowing that we are energy. But if you have that as your foundational understanding, you'll start to also understand why you are feeling different lots of times. Why the cosmos plays a role in that. Why the solar flares play a role in that. Why you may feel the way you feel when it comes to new moons, um, full moons. The cosmos is part of this, right? We're all connected in this, but it's energy. The earth is energy, all right? A full-on energy ball, all right? So my, my point in this is, as a foundational understanding, knowing that we are all energy can assist you forward in understanding some other concepts as you go down the road. So you could you could learn more about what that all means, but I'm just putting that out there for you. I would love to have known that everything was energy. I had no clue. I had no clue. I've told you this before. My journey was of an individual who, and this is not an exaggeration, I had had a tarot reading in my 20s, but I barely knew what a tarot card was back in 2015. And then I woke up in 2016 and literally like, my crown opened up and all the knowledge showed up or else it just popped up out of my cellular memory. Who knows, right? Anyway, needless to say. So I would have loved to have known that. All right. That's number one. I mean, these are in no particular order, by the way. Um, the other thing too, and I have, I don't want to say I've struggled with this. Well, yeah, I guess I have. I've struggled with incorporating the awakening journey, spiritual practices and energy practices in my day to day. Remember, we're in the big show. The Awakening Ascension Journey is the show. It's not a sideshow. It's not a hobby. It is not something you do every other day or once a month or whatever. It is the show. So what, <laughs> what we've got to remember is, again, back to number one, because we're energy, we've got to take care of ourselves, all right? Not just in the physical sense, which lots of us, you know, we're not there great at. We all have our stuff. Secondarily, you know, the mental, emotional, well, we know how that's going down. We don't have that support in our, particularly in the United States, mental health care is a disaster, right? We're having to really, you know, look at new ways of assisting people and assisting ourselves. But thirdly, we never ever learn that we have an energy body and that we need to take care of it as well. So what I would love to have known is, nope, establish right away some basic spiritual and energetic practices to support your energetic self, your auric field, your chakras, how you're going to feel as your body shifts and changes out of that material. I don't want to say out of that material state, but into more of that 
that cellular structure changing into more, that light body, that true light body, and moving into different frequencies, higher frequencies, higher states of consciousness. Our bodies are shifting and changing, so we have to support that, okay? We really need to support that. We also know that there are real things such as other people's energies. There are things such as, and I've talked long and hard about this, you know, attachments and and um, uh, hooks and all these kinds of things, you know, energies flying all over the place. If we could see it, we'd be amazed. We would be amazed. It's all around us. So there's these clearing practices. There's, um, and I'm not going to go through the practices, but we want to take care of our energy bodies. We want to establish our spiritual practices. What do the, what are the important ones for you? And they're going to shift and change in your journey. They're going to shift and change as needed. You don't have to get hooked. on like, I have to do this to be able to do that, to do that, or to be able to protect me here, or to do that. No, you just flow into what feels right for you. I will say, I think one of the most important practices, and again, it's still your choice, that you can establish early on is regular energy clearing. Whether it's with a Reiki practitioner, um, and I, I do say we can do our own, but I believe it's incredibly powerful to have someone else do this for you as well on a regular basis. I also believe in strongly in body work okay we have a body that holds our energy system right and if we're out of whack you know this can be very hard for this energy to move through so we want a nice aligned spine we want we we want to be able to be strong in our physical body so i highly recommend some kind of therapeutic massage like shiatsu is a therapeutic massage practice i've been doing this for over 25 years and it is the core foundation of why my um, energetic system is so wide open. Okay, every two weeks I've done it. Um, again, you don't have to do these things. I'm just giving you some examples. Uh, body work, energy work, um, meditation. So see, you kind of got mind, body, soul there. My, mind, mind <laughs> body, and your energy body. Okay, so meditation. Those three things for me are just critically important. Just critically important. And there are many other things we can do as well. So establish early on some basic spiritual practices and energetic practices and grow from there. Okay. And of course, I didn't know that. I didn't know any of that. I wasn't doing anything. And I kind of fell into a rabbit hole on that too. So all, most of these things here that I'm telling you, I either stumbled upon, had my own problems with and realized I needed to do something, or um somehow happen to just start doing them, which your higher self does start leading you, but it's good to know intellectually. It's good to know the human mind wants to know these things, right? Yes, our higher self guides us to certain things, but isn't it nice to be able to have your mind and your, your human self kind of go, yeah, I get it. I get it, higher self. Yeah, I know what we're doing. Okay, kind of working together on that, right? Okay, number three, search out like-minded people. Oh, you're really like, particularly those of you who are new, there isn't anyone. <laughs> Because this journey can be really lonely. There are people out there. What I will tell you, and this is tied to the next one, um, that people basically will be leaving your journey uh, ultimately. But let's just talk about that. Searching out like-minded people. You will be guided, most likely, um, to go to certain places like, I don't know, gem and crystal centers, uh, metaphysical fairs. Um, you'll just start kind of being guided to go that direction, typically. Now, again, everybody's journey is different. That's not going to happen to everyone. But what I would say to you is consciously search it out. You know, I, I understand our higher self guides us, but as a human, let's just kind of, let's get it going on, right? I mean, you can make choices to do this. If you're feeling it, go for it, okay? So what I would say is, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things for me was, <laughs> I'll never forget when I went into my, um, local gem and crystal or gem and healing center and the front section is all full of their stones and their crystals and I got hit with so much energy I couldn't stop talking I didn't know what's happening to me I was just like oh I was out of my body so much so what I will say to you is uh, be aware when you walk into a crystal shop that if you're new to this yep you'll probably get really ungrounded fast but it'll be an amazing amount of energy, which of course can be a little uh, unsettling in a good way, I guess I'll just say, but search out these places, search out classes, search out, um, um, uh, I don't know, spiritual, um, I don't know, there's spiritual churches, that was never something for me, 
um, but there are some good ones if you're looking to be with groups of people, of like-minded people, um, like literally spiritually based churches that um, are, you know, understanding of this awakening and ascension journey. There are many other ways that you can take, you know, you have resources online, right? You can, you can um, connect with people online in groups. Uh, the whole knowledge seeking phase is a big deal, right? But I think it's important to, and this one is a hard one because lots of times it's hard to connect physically in person with people who are of like mind. And then what I will tell you, everybody's at a different stage. It, like I have like five friends here in town and there's really only one of them that I can talk about anything about this journey and they'll understand. Others will kind of look at you glossy eyed about certain topics or look at me, I should say, <coughs> about certain topics, but that's because of where they're at in their journey. So what you want to understand, and this is all tying together to some of the other things and I'm kind of going to end up repeating myself, but um, is that everybody's at a different stage and not everyone is encapsulating all of the big picture of this. Now, the reason I am is because of the work I do. It just, everything opened up to me. I made an assumption everybody knew all this stuff, which is, of course, as many of you know, you get in these conversations, you want everybody to know about this, or you want to share everything, and then people just look at you cross-eyed, right? Even those who are on this awakening journey may not understand that, for example, we're connected galactically. There are star beings out there that we're connected to, blah, 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 on and on, right? Past lives, I don't know, you name it. But <clears throat> start trying to find your tribe, um, like-minded people, uh, uh, practitioners, all of that, that that can start being put into place for your support. This is going to happen overnight, typically, okay? Not going to happen overnight. You're going to, people are going to come in and go and you're going to touch base with some and they'll be in your journey for a period of time. But I really feel like connecting in with like-minded people is so important. Actually, and it's funny, two of my closest friends, one I've never met, we basically do everything online and um, we've, gosh, been connected for at least five years, I would say. The other one is the same way. I have met her once, but this is the other thing, online community. You may end up finding some of your closest friends online through this awakening journey. So try to search out, okay? Don't work hard at it, but try to search out like-minded people. And keep in mind, this is the fourth one. People will leave your journey. Those who have been in your path and been a part of your journey, relationships shift and change because we're moving out of that frequency. So I wish I would have known that, right? I did kind of know it from Dolores, reading Dolores Cannon. When I went through my knowledge phase, reading tons of books, I remember Dolores Cannon saying something to the effect of, and I don't remember how she said it, but it was confusing to me in that people will leave your lives. You're just going to choose not to... And I thought, it could be family, friends. And I'm like, well, how's that happen? I mean, what, we just one day walk away from each other or we talk about it and we part ways or we get in fights or... No, it's just energetic. Our time has come to complete that part of our journey. And then it starts to flow that way. And then we separate out. Friends are best example of that, I think, in that we may become very close with people for a period of time for a, 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 a certain reason. And as you move forward in this journey, you're going to start to know the, those reasons. As the thing's happening, you're going to know. So it's not just completely confusing when somebody either enters your journey or leaves your journey. You're going to start to understand that better as you mature more in this uh, spiritual journey, I will say. But people will come into your journey and they will leave your journey. It, it is an established fact. It has happened to nearly everyone I know. And it has happened to me. And I will say it is meant to happen doesn't mean it's always easy parting, but there's purpose in all of this. And it has a lot to do with, again, energy, where we're at in our frequency and our vibration. It does not mean anybody's good or bad. Okay, keep that in mind. Not anybody good or bad. You just are at a different frequency. Okay, so uh, let's see, looking at my notes here. Um, we talked about new people will enter in. That Let me just comment on that. That's number five. What you want to know is that there is oftentimes, and I didn't know this either, all this I didn't know, there's a lonely phase of the journey often. 
but it's for purpose because so many of us are so attuned to getting everything from the outside of us, keeping ourselves busy, a lot of social events, just constant busyness where we naturally in the awakening journey start coming into more of ourselves and realizing some of the things that what used to feel right for us no longer do. And so what starts to happen is we, and then when, when people start leaving too, right? Or we start leaving them in essence, this can become a, um, I, I don't want to call it, well, it can be lonely at times. All right. But there's purpose in this because it's about getting to know yourself in a way you never have before. So we want to take advantage of that. We don't want to like fight against it and try to keep doing the things we used to do and it doesn't feel right. Lean into how you feel. So I wish I would have known that there will be those lonely times when people leave our journey. We leave their journey. New ones will eventually enter in, but it doesn't always happen at the same time. So keep that in mind, that the lonely part of the journey, if you've had that, or the more, is for the inner focus. It is critical and needed to move forward in this journey. It is a keystone. It is literally a keystone to this journey, okay? Now, most all of us will have some of that, whether we feel that way in ourselves, we take more time for ourselves, whatever that is. But I just want you to keep in mind that you may come to a point in time where you think, what in the world is this journey about? I feel so lonely. Take advantage of that time. That's what you're meant to be doing. Okay, uh, number six. <laughs> this one astounded me. And this might trip you up too. Not everyone who is psychic or has their intuitive gifts open up knows anything about spiritual awakening or the ascension process. We have Reiki practitioners out there. In fact, I know a number of people that they don't know anything about ascension. They just happen to have their intuitive gifts opened up. But they're not formally awake, all right? Because we know there's phases of this, but... It's really, I, and the reason I put this one in there is because it tripped me up. I didn't get it at all. I was so confused because it helps you kind of put yourself into where, where you are in the journey. Like what is, what is, how does this all get constructed, right? My assumption was anybody who was psychic or had psychic gifts, well, I mean, we all have them, but they're not awake, right? That was displaying them, to, using it for a living or fun or just, that's just who they were. I thought they were awake. Nope. I've had a lot of people say, I don't even know what Ascension is. So keep that in mind. Again, that's not that important to know along the journey, but I think it is any kind of awareness for us is important. And that kind of ties to the everybody's at different stages of the journey. Keep that in mind too, because, um, or they're not consciously aware. So what we want to do usually when we first start in this awakening journey is we want to tell everybody. <laughs> Because it's kind of like, we feel like, oh, we've been missing out on this all along and everybody else knows about it. No, they don't. No, they don't. You're a first waiver. You're a front liner, right? A second waiver, whatever. You're in the beginning of this process. But we don't know that because there's no guidebook, right? So, you know, we do the whole blubbering thing to everyone and they all think, look at us cross-eyed. Because you're not ever going to convince anybody that is not awake about this awakening journey. They can't relate. They cannot relate. Now, maybe kernels of, the, uh, of it, they will. But save yourself some grief and anxiety and just know that um, more than likely those of you who, you know, have, I don't know, family members, friends, most of them, are now a lot more people are waking up, I will say. And we do spark their awakening as we go through ours, likely. Uh, that I've seen that happen in spades for people. It doesn't mean everybody will. But yeah, just know that not everyone is awake. And uh, we can make that mistake and feel really... Um, well, it can make us feel really different, but uh, so I wish I would have known that ahead of time because I just made an assumption I'd been missing something all along and in, when in reality, that's not the case. Okay, we're on to number eight. I guess we're going to get to all nine today. Um, the awakening and ascension journey, well, the awakening journey is not linear. We have a tendency in our human journey to think that we do this, we do this, we do this, and it just goes nicely and flows nicely, right? No, it really doesn't ever happen that way. I mean, yes, we can project plan our, our lives and all of that, 
And we do have kind of a trajectory we take as humans, right? But within that, there's all these little messy things that happen, all these side routes, all of that, right? Our great big plans, lots of things don't go to plan. My point in this is you can't plan the awakening in that sense. It's not linear. You're going to be presented to you in a very, I'll just say, non-linear way. Signs and messages, uh, points along the journey where you will visit something, maybe something you're healing, um, you're working on um, improving about yourself, whatever it is, and you think you got it licked, nope, it's gonna come back down the road because it's gonna be like, are you sure you got it all? Are you sure you, let's, let's check this. So it's, it's like this, it's, it's puzzle pieces all over the place, it is not linear. So it's not a, and this is the reason I say this, is a, a lot of folks think, oh, I'm gonna get to the end, I'm gonna get to my goal, and when am I, I'm done, when am I done? No, that's not how this works. It's not how this, we are constantly maturing in this process. And none of us, I don't care what anybody says as a, even a channeler, <laughs> right? Because like I get a ton of information, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you, well, here's the end, and the end goal and then this is going to happen and nothing more will happen after that. And you are where you meant to be. We don't know. We do not know as humans. All right. So what I will tell you, I do know this. It is a continuing, continuous growth process. Where that ends, I have no idea. All right. Because it doesn't end after our passing in the incarnation of, say, Carolyn, that will then continue in another incarnation, in another opportunity to continue to grow, all right? So the journey is not linear, and I guess I should just add, it never ends. Now, what I will say is it's like that video game that I told you about. Remember the metaphor they used in the video game? We up-level. We get points. <laughs> We get points if you're a gamer. We get points. We up level to a certain level and we're like, yeah, that's great. I'm so cool. Well, okay, you might be really cool and feel good about it and you should, right? However, you're going to get new challenges, but it's at a more mature level. It's different. It's like all the stuff you've learned previously will be applied and used and some very complex things can occur, all right? We meet new challenges. We meet new challenges, but at the same time, it's not all about the work and the challenges and the strife and all that other beautiful things start to happen for, for us. And we know this. Those of us who've been on this journey for a while, all oh, the difficulty and the sorrow and the struggle and the things we go through, we eventually kind of go, oh, God, okay. And then the, 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 the you know, light at the end of the tunnel shows up and we're like, oh, my God, this is why I went through this. And it's mostly a feeling. It's a knowing or it's a sometimes it's a manifested thing that shows up. But it's basically this shift and change in ourselves and how we treat ourselves, how we live our life, what we choose to do with what we have in front of us, right? So anyway, that's the journey is not linear thing. And, and again, uh, oh, they just said to me, expect the unexpected, but you're always guided. Remember that. That's another thing. And this is not number nine. This, I guess we're going to do 10 is I wish I would have known I had a spirit team. I didn't have a clue. I'd always kind of known I'd had a guardian angel, but I never thought about it. Because I lived a typical life. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Typical mainstream life. And just working my career to get to wherever I was going. I have no idea. Having some fun here and there, traveling, blah, blah. No clue about any of this. So yes, you have a spirit team. You have angels. You have guides. It's a two-way street. Create that relationship. Speak to them in the morning. Close out at the end of the day and thank them. And do whatever you want in between to for your higher source, right? For your God source. And you know, prayer, whatever that is for you. But I always say our friends are hanging around us in spirit. They want to work with us. We have support, okay? But engage with them, all right? Engage with them. I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have known that. I was fortunate in that with my journey, um, you know, sadly, um, Kent passed away, those of you who know my story, which launched me into my awakening journey. He was ever present. He was ever present that first year and a half. So those of you who have had um, your awakening started by someone who has passed, oftentimes I would I would bet you you have felt them nearby in your early journey. But anyway, needless to say. So that said, we're going to go into number nine, or I guess this is number ten. Oh, and I did say this before, but we're just going to call it number ten. Awakening, the Ascension Journey. It is the show. It's the reason we're here. It is not a hobby. You can make it a hobby, but you're not going to get very far. It's not something you pull out every now and then to take a look at and go, oh, I think I'll do that today and then put it away for months. 
you know, you took the pill, <laughs> basically. And if we go to turn our backs on it, I do believe the struggle's harder. And I don't want to say the struggle, the journey can be much more difficult. Most of us who do awake and flow into the journey, but I definitely know people who have switched it off. And what I will say, or tried to switch it off, but getting hammered. Okay, so we want to try to flow with the journey. All right, the awakening is the show, is the reason we are here and all the things that come with it, right? It's not a sideshow. It is not a hobby. And what I would say to you is you will save yourself a lot of angst and suffering, honestly, suffering, if you just choose to follow it, if you just choose to embrace what it is and in, 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 and choose to move in that direction, finding your true self of living in your fullest uh, way possible as a human and continuing to grow as the journey presents itself to you rather than turning a blind eye to it. So again, it's the reason we're here. And I think most of you who've been on this journey for a while understand this and it can be arduous. Um, it can be full of strife, but it is so full of beauty and so full of wonder and so full of shift and change into, honestly, the glory of who we truly are as we start understanding our own power and actually being able to use that in this material world as a human. So with that today, those are 10 things. I hope there are, we could talk about each of these like in much more detail, but I hope these are little kernels of things that you can take forward in your awakening and ascension journey that may help spark something in you as you move forward. So with that, you can check out my services at purplerainhealing.com. If you would like to work with me, I can help guide you through your entire process of your awakening journey if you choose through the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which is a great way to continue to work with me over time. And we just keep unfolding your journey and assisting you in your current circumstances. But we're gonna take into account past, present, and future, and that includes past lives as well as lives off planet. Plus, we're gonna also talk about potential future as well. But most importantly, we're gonna help you in the now moment with the things that are going on in your journey. I also offer distance energy healing and channeled messages with audio recordings of 50 minutes or more for your journey, including a specialized one, which is just past life. So reach out if you'd like. I'd love to work with you. I also offer 15 minute consultations to help you decide on a service. And again, I do appreciate you joining me. Feel free to add anything in the comments of things that maybe you wish you would have known before you started this awakening journey. And then we can all learn from each other. So again, I hope you took something away for the puzzle of your own journey. And I will see you in the next video.